A hot, dusty afternoon in rural Kenya once meant missed calls, missed opportunities, and a phone constantly in need of a power source. Now, in a quiet revolution powered not by electricity but by innovation, Africa is witnessing the birth of something extraordinary. A phone that charges itself, not plugged into a wall, not tethered to a diesel generator, but fed by the endless sunlight blanketing the continent every day. This isn't science fiction or some far-off concept. This is a reality being built by African minds, on African soil, for African needs. Millions across the continent have relied on mobile phones for years, but that reliance has often come with one frustrating caveat. Power is unreliable, and charging can be a daily challenge. The cost of electricity, or the complete lack of access to it, creates a digital divide, a barrier that blocks access to education, markets, and communication. But what if your phone never needed to be charged in the traditional way again? What if the sun, so abundant and often oppressive, became the battery? What if Africa led the world in making the mobile phone truly mobile, untethered, independent, and always ready? Enter the self-powered phone, a breakthrough emerging not from Silicon Valley or Shenzhen, but from African innovation hubs, startups, and garage-born ingenuity. Designed with affordability and sustainability in mind, this phone uses solar panels integrated seamlessly into its body to harvest sunlight and convert it into power. It doesn't just work in theory. It's working in real field tests across countries like Ghana, Nigeria, and Zimbabwe. And the implications are enormous. Imagine a market vendor in Lagos no longer needing to close shop early because her phone battery is dead. Think of a student in Malawi who can now attend virtual lessons without electricity at home. Picture a health worker deep in the DRC who can now stay connected with emergency services because his phone never dies on the job. That's the promise of Africa's first self-powered phone, and it's more than just a gadget. It's a gateway. In communities where mobile phone penetration exceeds electricity access, the need for energy-independent devices is both urgent and transformative. Across villages and urban neighborhoods alike, stories are emerging of how even prototypes of these phones are changing lives. But this didn't happen overnight. The journey began with pioneers, engineers, dreamers, and disruptors, determined to solve a problem uniquely African with a solution beautifully African. One such innovator is Maxwell Chikambutso, the Zimbabwean inventor known for creating self-powered technologies using radio frequency. His influence sparked others, local universities, tech incubators, and startups, to think differently about power and communication. Tech companies in Kigali, Dar es Salaam, and Cape Town began developing blueprints for phones that sip power from ambient light and sun exposure. Some designs use thin-film solar panels that wrap around the phone's back, absorbing sunlight even while walking. Others integrate motion energy and RF harvesting technologies, drawing microvoltage from Wi-Fi signals and electromagnetic fields. In Uganda, the startup Sawatech has developed a prototype that charges in both daylight and dim light, storing excess energy for nighttime use. In Kenya, SunTalk phones have become a test case for mass deployment in schools and clinics. The designs vary, but the mission is the same, connectivity without constraint. And it's not just engineers making this dream real. Entrepreneurs, funders, and government ministries are rallying around the idea that Africa can leapfrog energy problems by building smart tech for real people. One CEO of a Nairobi-based startup said it best, if you solve a problem in Africa, you've built a solution for half the world. The cost savings alone are staggering. Charging a phone at local kiosks, common in areas without grid access, can cost as much as 10% of someone's daily income. Over the course of a year, that adds up to hundreds of dollars in lost productivity and power fees. A self-powered phone eliminates that recurring burden. It also means no more long treks to charging stations, no more tangled wires or power banks, no more waiting. And because these phones are being designed locally, they are priced with affordability in mind, often costing less than imported smartphones that offer fewer features. This is not a premium product for the wealthy, this is a liberation tool for the underserved. Even in its early stages, adoption is growing. Small pilot programs have begun in South Africa, targeting low-income communities with rugged, solar-powered phones. In Burkina Faso, 
Teachers in rural regions are receiving early models to test their reliability in classrooms where electricity is scarce. In Tanzania, fisherfolk along Lake Victoria use these phones to check market prices and weather conditions in real time. Each story echoes a similar theme, freedom, access, and opportunity through innovation. But beyond the economic and logistical benefits, the self-powered phone has symbolic power. It represents Africa creating its own answers, designing not just for now but for the next generation. It shows that African tech is not limited to software development or mobile money platforms. It extends into hardware, sustainability, and ecosystem thinking. Local manufacturing is slowly taking root as small-scale facilities experiment with producing solar back casings and components. Universities are launching R&D labs focused on energy autonomous devices, using local materials and recycled components. The phones are also environmentally responsible. By eliminating the need for constant electricity, they reduce carbon emissions from diesel generators and power plants. Their solar panels often double as protective exteriors, reducing the need for extra accessories. Some companies are experimenting with biodegradable casing materials, minimizing e-waste. For students, this means the power to learn without interruption. For farmers, it means access to market apps, weather data, and logistics without a power socket. For women entrepreneurs, it means new levels of economic independence. For elders, it means connection to family and healthcare even in remote areas. And for Africa as a whole, it means rewriting the rules of digital development. Governments are starting to take notice. Partnerships are forming between public and private sectors to fund pilot programs, certification, and local manufacturing. In Nigeria, policymakers are exploring subsidies for self-powered devices in rural outreach programs. In Botswana, pilot studies are evaluating the long-term durability of these phones in desert climates. International NGOs are stepping in, supporting distribution to communities off the grid. The United Nations Development Program has even listed self-powered communication devices among its emerging priorities. With international support and African leadership, this innovation is poised to scale. Critically, African inventors are demanding control of the IP, the intellectual property, and ensuring that patents are filed locally, not just overseas. This matters for sovereignty, for sustainability, and for building Africa's innovation economy from within. Tech hubs like iHub in Nairobi and Bongo Hive in Zambia are mentoring youth to continue the journey. Hackathons and school competitions now include categories for solar and self-powered design. Workshops train girls in STEM fields with projects centered on solar circuitry and device sustainability. This is a movement, not just a moment. And yet, challenges remain. Mass production needs to be scaled, and that requires investment and infrastructure. Supply chains for components must be strengthened within the continent. Training and support must be embedded in rollout strategies, especially in rural areas. But the momentum is undeniable. The press is taking notice with stories appearing in Pan-African media, tech journals, and even global platforms like the BBC and Al Jazeera. Social media buzz is growing, with hashtags like hashtag SolarPhoneAfrica and hashtag ChargeWithSun trending. Crowdfunding campaigns are supporting community trials, often exceeding their goals in days. The people want this. The time is right. Africa is not asking for help. It's building its own ladder. Self-powered phones are just the beginning. This could lead to a full ecosystem of self-powered technology. Tablets, modems, even wearable devices that function independently of the grid. An entire infrastructure could grow around this idea. One rooted in clean energy, local design, and equitable access. As one young coder from Rwanda put it, we aren't just building phones, we're building a future. And that future is shining a little brighter, powered by nothing more than the sun and the will to change. A continent that once faced disconnection is now on the verge of becoming a global pioneer in self-powered communication. Every sunrise no longer just marks the start of a new day. It recharges potential, ambition, and lives through a phone that fuels itself. This isn't just about technological advancement. It's about economic liberation at a deeply personal level for millions. The money once spent each week on charging phones at kiosks is now going toward school supplies, food, and small businesses. 
Mothers are no longer forced to choose between saving power for light or charging their phone for emergencies. Students in off-grid areas no longer miss digital assignments because their phones died before the lesson finished downloading. In places where daily life used to be shaped by a simple 5% battery warning, that tyranny is slowly vanishing. The adoption curve is steep, but the interest is organic and widespread. From markets in Senegal to schools in Zambia, word spreads fast when a tool changes life overnight. What once seemed like a dream is being touched, tested, and trusted by everyday people who never asked for luxury, just reliability. Power banks, once essential, are becoming obsolete for users of self-powered phones. No more tangled cables, desperate last-minute hunts for wall sockets, or arguments over whose phone gets charged first. This new device is sleek, durable, intuitive, and, most importantly, it doesn't discriminate based on access to power infrastructure. Local designers are deeply attuned to the needs of rural users. Durability is key, and these phones often feature shock-resistant exteriors, dust-proof casing, and long-life solar cells. Battery management systems are optimized to prevent overheating in extreme climates and preserve solar-charged power during overcast days. The software is just as important as the hardware. Operating systems are built to be light, fast, and capable of running essential applications without draining too much power. Offline features are emphasized, language translation, mobile payments, e-learning, and digital farming tools that function without an internet connection. Many self-powered phones also serve as mini hubs, offering Wi-Fi or Bluetooth sharing to nearby devices. This turns one phone into a lifeline for an entire household or community group. In refugee camps and remote settlements, this function alone can make a difference in health reporting, aid tracking, and security alerts. In areas where radio communication is still vital, these phones can tune in and even broadcast local bulletins. And with dual SIM support, users can take advantage of competitive telecom offers while staying reachable across networks. These features aren't optional luxuries. They are necessary innovations driven by real-life demands. When your electricity grid fails but your phone keeps working, that's not convenience. It's empowerment. It allows a market woman to use mobile money at the end of a long day without worrying about power access. It enables young people to explore coding apps, gaming, and even content creation directly from their phone. African YouTubers are already recording entire series on solar-charged phones, showing that creation doesn't depend on a studio. It depends on energy, energy that's free, constant, and clean. The sustainability element of this device is reshaping global discussions about tech waste and ethical production. Where Western nations debate e-waste, African innovators are designing solutions that prevent it. Modular components allow easy repair and replacement, extending device life and reducing landfill accumulation. Some startups are already accepting trade-ins for older models, offering upgrade discounts and responsibly recycling the electronics. This circular economy model is being born in Africa, not copied from the West but built from scratch with intention. A new generation of African youth is growing up not just using phones but dreaming of improving them. Tech boot camps are incorporating solar integration and autonomous design into their programs. High school science fairs now feature projects on off-grid circuitry and phone-based energy storage. Some villages have created community tech labs, where locals take apart and rebuild phones to understand how they work. This democratization of knowledge could lead to the next wave of innovation. Phones that not only charge themselves but help power other devices. Imagine a self-powered phone with reverse charging, able to act as a microgenerator for flashlights, radios, or other phones. Already, some prototypes offer small USB output ports for such features. And the software side is moving just as quickly. Apps tailored for low-power environments are becoming more advanced, AI translation, voice control, even health diagnostics. A mother in Sierra Leone can now track her child's vaccinations or monitor their nutrition with a solar-charged phone. Health workers use apps that triage symptoms and connect them to remote doctors via solar-charged telemedicine sessions. Farmers scan crops to identify diseases and get advice from digital agriculture assistants, even without internet thanks to preloaded knowledge banks. Teachers send class materials via Bluetooth when there's no signal, turning every phone into an offline content hub.
In this way, the self-powered phone is no longer a device. It's a platform for resilience. It's the intersection where renewable energy, mobile connectivity, and human empowerment meet. It's not just what the phone does, it's what it enables others to do. And it comes at the right time. As climate change threatens traditional power infrastructure and worsens inequality, off-grid tech offers stability. In flood zones, drought-prone regions, and displaced communities, this kind of independence becomes life-saving. Solar-powered communications become disaster response tools, resilience tools, and peace tools. They connect the disconnected, amplify the unheard, and protect the vulnerable. And behind this rising, revolution are real human stories. Like the grandmother in Namibia who uses a self-powered phone to receive daily weather updates and adjust her market inventory accordingly. Like the teenage girl in Ethiopia who completes her school lessons under a tree using an educational app. No electricity, no delay. Like the refugee in Chad who contacts family in Sudan through WhatsApp using a phone that's never been plugged into a wall. Or the village chief in Cameroon who now coordinates healthcare, security, and trade. All from a single solar charge device. These stories are not rare. They're multiplying daily. Each success deepens the demand and spreads the idea further. In the background, governments are creating frameworks to support this new industry. In Rwanda, the National Innovation Board is offering tax exemptions for components used in solar tech. In Tanzania, mobile carriers are offering incentives for customers who switch to self-powered phones. Extra data, longer warranties, loyalty rewards. In Ghana, Universities are partnering with solar companies to integrate engineering and product development in their curricula. These collaborations strengthen the backbone of the industry and protect its future from foreign dependency. Critically, they keep ownership in African hands. As the phones begin scaling to mass markets, manufacturing lines are being set up locally, creating jobs and reducing import reliance. Even logistics are evolving, Motorbike delivery systems ensure that phones reach rural regions where demand is highest. E-commerce platforms across Africa are giving these phones top visibility in their catalogs, often featuring customer reviews and real-life stories. Local influencers are promoting them not just as gadgets, but as cultural milestones. It's no longer cool to have the most expensive foreign phone. It's cool to have a phone that works when nothing else does. A phone that speaks your language, recognizes your needs, and reflects your environment. A phone that carries African fingerprints on every circuit, every panel, every line of code. The future is moving fast, but for once, Africa is setting the pace. What began as an answer to power problems is now a full-blown movement in sustainable communication. Tech events in Lagos, Nairobi, and Addis Ababa are dedicating full panels to self-powered solutions. Competitions now include categories for energy independence in consumer electronics. And Africa's innovators are showing that simplicity, not complexity, wins when it comes to impact. The idea is so compelling, in fact, that companies from Europe and Asia are watching closely, and some are even seeking partnerships. But African leaders are clear. This isn't a product to be exported first. This is a solution to be scaled at home for those who need it most. Africa is not waiting to be invited to the future. Africa is building it phone by phone, village by village, light beam by light beam. And while the rest of the world worries about charging cords, this continent is looking to the sky. The sun is constant, free, and ours. And now, so is the power in our pockets. To those watching, the message is simple. This is the new Africa. Not one of scarcity, but of invention. Not one of waiting, but of leading. To those still depending on wall sockets, consider this a gentle nudge from a continent that found another way. The time has come to stop charging and start living. Support the innovators. Explore the products. Share the stories. Join the revolution. Because the phone in your hand might still rely on a plug. But Africa's doesn't have to. And very soon, neither will the rest of the world.